Hey, welcome to another engine update. And this one, it's all about tile maps. So in the last video, I made this amazing function that splits an image into separate images. Let me show you the tile set here, right? Uh, this is, was just me doing a test. Let me delete this. Anyways, so it, it splits the image, but now I need to construct back the image as a tile map right and this is all about this class this tile map class i can create a tile map and pass um, a default tile resolution it needs to be squared though so i can pass like this width here that we we got and then i can simply add tiles to it and it will handle the style at this given position with this given image right and I can submit this and it will compile and run. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm basically getting two tiles here. Let me show you. Uh, I'm getting these two tiles right here and putting them next to each other. And then I'm getting this barrel and putting them, putting two of it on top of those two tiles. Okay, so just an, uh, as an example. So you can see the first, I'm getting this two tiles that I said the wall corners and then this is two barrels and I'm putting this on top. How do I know? Because the exposition here is on top, right? And with some offsets, anyways, this is simple and in the end I can submit and when it comes to drawing, I can use the tile map and draw the tile map and the shader works, the transform works, everything works just fine. And if I press uh, F5 to run, you can see Still no aspect ratio, but you can see four tiles here going on. So one here in the left, one in the right, and then we have those two on top. And uh, this is very simple, actually. This is a simple way to do, oh, again, transforms, they work just fine. I had to do some fixing and some other implementation, for example, my math uh, matrix to vector multiplication was wrong, so I just change this to work and it is now working just fine and this tile map function is simple it, it bothers a little bit it bothers me a bit that i do have some private stuff that is not very trivial to change for example the tile size uh, once you create a tile map you need to respect like every image that you pass to the tile map needs to be the same size otherwise it won't work because of the way that i group the images together so it is like a private member that you cannot change afterwards, otherwise it will explode things. The same for the tiles, for the individual tiles, because if you change an image later on, it's not good. Anyways, so I'm still deciding what I would do this, but basically, other than that, the API is very simple. I can create a tile map, pass an initial tile size, or I can copy an existing one, um, use and draw, the routines used to draw this, the, the thing, and then submit to build everything and send to the GPU. And then, of course, I have the add tiles. Two functions here. One takes a position only and the other takes a transform. And of course, they both take an image. Um, you can notice here that I'm not following a grid. I'm not. I'm allowing you to freely add any position and rotation you want. It's up to you and it's fine. The reason why I did that is because, well, maybe let me play the game again. Let's say that I want to use this tile map itself to later on add some grass. Let's say that I want to add, I don't know, a grass decal here. Actually, a decal won't work because the, the, the ordering, ordering will be messed up. But let's say this barrel itself, you can see that it is within an offset. It's not aligned to the previous one. And this is actually something good I, I like this because you may want to do that in your, in, in your game or something like that maybe you want to rotate a, a sprite anything it's up to you right so i decided to le leave this with no grid and then leave the grid as an implementation detail in other words if you want to have a grid you can go ahead and implement a grid and this, the only thing that will change is that these numbers here will follow a grid, but internally it's free. So I decided to do this, it's by design. And what this add tile does is basically it adds the transform in the image into this vector of tiles. Very simple, right? And this is later on used by the submit 
to build a mesh based on all those transforms. It will create a plane per transform and put in this mesh. And it will also build an image atlas using all the images here that the tiles have. And this is why we have another vector here of images because the add tile is also adding this image reference to this vector because then we can go ahead and build an atlas that is basically a single texture that contains all the images in the tile map. So this is an optimization because then we can proceed to draw the entire tile map with a single draw call, regardless of how many images are there. So very simple and straightforward. Let me go ahead and walk through the submit, which is probably the most interesting function, right? Um, you can see it's not a huge function. It's actually simple. Uh, the first thing I check is, is if the tile size is positive, because otherwise it won't work. Then I clear the mesh to handle it again. And I check if I have actual images and tiles, otherwise it's useless to do this. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff. I've, I tried to add some comments so it, it's clear for you to, to see. So first thing I do is to resize the Atlas image. To fit all the image, as I said, we want to add all of them. So you can see the image count. I'm adding uh, one image side by side uh, across the x-axis of this atlas. Um, and then what I do here with this, I first do a cleanup to remove anything. Let me actually break this to remove unused images because maybe there's an image that we appended and then we removed the tile later on and the image is still there. So we need to do this cleanup. Uh, it's quick and dirty, it's not beautiful this code, but it does a trick, it does, it does a job actually, so it's fine, I'm happy with it, there's no problem, right? Um, once I did this cleanup, I calculate the offsets and append the images to the atlas. So this offset will be later on used by the mesh, I will, go, I will talk about that in a moment, but it's basically like the image... The first image in the array is the, first, the offset zero, the second image is offset one, and so on. Straightforward, but just a lookup table to make things easier, right? And then I'm appending the, this image to the atlas image. So this is a new function, this is a new method that I created for the image, which is image.append. I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the previous video, because I have a feeling that I did. But anyways, you can append an image into another new function, it's fine, right? Uh, so I'm appending all that and passing the offset here in the x-axis. Zero in the y-axis, it's fine. Finally, I build the mesh. So for every single tile in the tiles, um, I retrieve the offset using the image to say if this is the first, the second, and whatever image. And I use this to, like, first, I append a plane, giving the tile transform, and then for every vertex in this plane, I know for sure that the plane does have four vertices only. So I'm iterating over the last four vertex of this uh, mesh vertices array, as you can see here. And then I'm changing the UV in the X axis to basically map to this image in the tile map, in the, in the tile S atlas. Uh, yes, this, this image here. So this is what I'm doing, right? And then once I have the mesh, created and the atlas created, I can submit everything to the GPU, which is the last thing I do. And in the end, I have a mesh with the layout that I want and the atlas with the textures that I need. And then in the use, I can simply use them and then draw, I can draw the mesh. So very simple behavior here. And this is everything that the tile map does for it to work. And we have it, yay. <laughs> So what's next for me? Um, actually, we are in a good position, a good place right now because most of the mm, fundamental stuff is done and ready to go. What is next is, I believe physics is a big thing. It's a huge thing actually that we need to implement. I'm not sure uh, what type of physics I will implement. Of course, I will do line axis, bounding boxes. This is basic for any physics, but I'm thinking about supporting different um, types of meshes, for example, non-aligned axis bounding boxes. For example, this one, let's say that this four objects were individual objects and the barrels were uh, bridged bodies and this is static bodies. Anyways, they are not aligned. 
maybe we can solve this collision this collision it's fine we uh, i want to support this maybe i want to do uh, different types of um shapes not all only boxes but maybe a circle uh, it's very trivial to calculate physics to a circle so it's fine and last but not least i'm not sure about this one but maybe we should support uh, custom meshes any arbitrary mesh 2d mesh collisions it will be fine i believe it's a good option not sure for now uh base i think i'll just keep 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 things basic for now but yes this is the idea behind it right so yeah this is basically the idea of what's next but this is not everything because there is a bunch of stuff that it is that you really need when it comes to create a game using a custom engine that you only realize that you need once you need it and since i've been creating games with custom engine for a while i know a bunch of things but for example uh, we need a timer a timer is very important when it comes to make games so i will implement a timer we also need a way to have uh, a frame per second limit an fps limiter because at the moment this while loop here that we call game loop simply runs as fast as possible and this is not ideal we want to limit this to like 60 frames per second or something like that so this is probably what's next right and um, there's other small stuff for example uh, i need to have a way to get the directory where the executable is in order to as access the files so this is a simple stuff that you only need until you need it so i might as well implement that and basically that's it i i I'm probably gonna do all those YouTube functions first, and then I will proceed to write the physics system, which I'm sort of excited about. So that's it for this video, folks. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.